I just want a man that will love me and accept me. Accept me in my looking good and when I don't look good. Accept me in the morning. Accept me at night. Accept me uh, uh, with my idiosyncrasies and my quirks and my faults and failures. I just, I just want him to love me and accept me. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Anybody in here been there? But if, if, if you perceive that he don't love you, if you feel like because of the way you see his actions and you, the way you see him talking and the, the way you see uh, uh, the way he's talking and dealing with you as he doesn't love you, then it does not generate respectful feelings. So Paul says here in Ephesians, he says, don't deal with each other based on what you perceive or feel, but what God has required on, for us is that we love our wives unconditionally, not based on what they do, but based on that's your wife. Amen. That's your wife. It's not about how easy it is to love her. It's not how, uh, how, how easy it is to love her. It's not so much about how easy it is to respect him. It's just that you give it to him unconditionally. You respect him no matter what. And you love her no matter what. Amen. 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 It's unconditional on both sides. Amen. So Paul says, he says, you ought to love us so much that you love her like your, your own selves. And, and then he says here to the woman in verse 33, he says, and, and for the wise, see that she reverence. That means respect. See that you respect him. See that you honor him. See that you respect him in the way that you ought to. Amen. First uh, Corinthians, hold your finger there, but 1 Corinthians 7 and 28. 1 Corinthians 7 and 28. Let's see what Paul says to the Corinthian church. Just uh, uh, verse uh, 7 and, and 28. Just see what he says here. Because I want you to know that Paul uh, was uh, one of the most prolific writers about marriage. And he says in 1 Corinthians, I told you what he said seven last week. I told you about, he talked about the do benevolence because even in do benevolence, we have love and respect issues. So therefore, when it comes to sex and marriage, you have love and respect. Because uh, without getting into much detail, a wife, if she's not approached right, she don't feel love. You just using them. But if a man don't get what he needs, he feel like he's being disrespected. You don't respect me. So therefore, the love and respect goes there. So here it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse uh, 28. It says, uh, but, and, and if, if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. So he says, it's a good thing to go ahead and get married. You know, if you're married, it's not sin. And if a virgin married, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. He gives you a warning. If you get married, right. you're going to have some trouble. Right. <laughs> I don't ask for no amen on this one. But if you get married, Paul is warning you. He's doing comparison and contrast. You will have trouble. But that's all right. If we follow what God said to do, then we can still have peace in the midst of our trouble. We can have joy in the midst of our trouble. We can have less trouble in our lives. Can you say amen? The same, the good trouble, uh, yes, I hear, I hear you. Uh, uh, in the same verse or in the same chapter, let's skip down to verse 33. Verse 33 says, but he, he that is married careth for the things that he that is married cared for the things that are of the world, how he must please his wife. He said, now, when you're unmarried, you can be spiritual. And it's interesting how sometimes the most single folks is the most unspiritual people. But he said, when you're unmarried, what should you be doing? Giving your time to the word of God. Giving your time to much prayer. You ought to be the most spiritual folks in the place. 
When you're unmarried, you got time to pray. You got time to fast. You don't need no consent for it. Just do it when you want to. You ought to be the most, oh my goodness, look like this, the singles ought to be, I tell you, the most powerhouse folks. Spiritually, they are. Because they don't have nobody to tend to. And that's what Paul is saying in verse 33. He says, but he that is married cares for the things of uh, that are the world. you got to consider what's going on in your life and the things of the world. How he must, how he may please his wife. Did you not know that most men, most normal men, want to please their wives? Most men. Most men want to please your wife. Most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. Verse 34 says, There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. Basically, a virgin being an unmarried person. There's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord. The unmarried woman, again, should be the most spiritual person there is. She ought to be praying and fasting and Going before the Lord day and night. Seeking his face. <laughs> but the Bible says that she may be, and for that, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. That means that if you are single, you're going to have to seek the Lord to be holy. Amen. Holiness for a single person is just not automatic. You better pray and fast and, and really seek the Lord. Now, if you ain't praying and fasting, we know what else is going on. But anyway, it says that she may be holy both in that's the implication of the scripture. If, if you ain't praying and fasting, you ain't holy. <laughs> said and that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married cares for the things of the world how she may please her husband. So marriage should produce a place where both persons are not looking to themselves but looking to the things of their spouse. Learning how to please your wife. Learning how to please your husband. Amen? I just thought that was a good scripture there. Often couples will say that uh, the issue is that you know she is just too sensitive, you know, and he she might say, well, he's just too touchy. But what is the real issue? That's not really the real issue. For example, when he gets home late from work and 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 have not called you and let you know that he's going to be late, she may be waiting on him to let him have it when she comes when he comes through the door. <laughs> She's ready to be sarcastic. She may greet him with bitterness and criticism and criticizing his integrity. But what is the real issue that she doesn't feel loved? That's the issue. She really, you, you're saying, this woman, what is wrong with her? So understand, if we understand the word of God, she doesn't feel loved. Because you've been gone all day. And you haven't called her to tell her that you were going to be late. You didn't call her and tell her what you were doing. You didn't call her and tell her when you were coming home. And so now, because she wants to be with you, she doesn't feel love. Or even if she don't want you to be, she just want to know why you're so late. Sometimes it ain't so much that they want to be in your presence. It's just about where are you? Amen. But even though she gives this kind of criticism, she's angry and it and it and, and, and she attacks your character, but the man feels disrespected. Because after all, she knows that I have to work late sometimes. But she angrily attacks his character, and this starts the crazy cycle. 
because he's not being respected and she doesn't feel love or he doesn't feel respected and she doesn't feel love. What are we going to do about this? This happens when the spouse is focused on their own needs and not the needs of the other person. The wife needs love, as I said. She's not trying to be disrespectful. The husband needs respect. He's not trying to be unloving. Once the couples realize what the real issue is, then they might be able to work this out. The real issue is many times not the issue. The issue is not the issue. Men and women interpret everything through these viewpoints. Wives, the best way that you can motivate your husband to love you is to show your husband respect whether he uh, deserves it or not. It's the best way to get love from him. If you need him to love you, respect him. Now, let me say this. Respect is what men most value. At the same time, a disrespectful wife is what men most fear. You'll find out, brother. <laughs> men disrespect or fears women or his wife disrespect. Oh, Lord, here we go again. All right, we know it's coming already. I can hear it already. You can feel it as you're driving up to the house. Here we go. Men fear the disrespect of a wife. And sometimes it feels like he can never do the right thing. Like, my God, can, is there anything I can do that's right? And I want you to know, wives, that when a man, when you disrespect him and when he fears you to the degree that he knows that you're going to go off or whatever it is you're going to do, then you kill positive feelings towards you. A husband cannot have positive feelings towards his wife if she seems disrespectful to him, if she seems to despise who he is even as a human being that can happen to the point where she despises who he is which means I just can't stand you can't get positive out of a negative but let me uh, uh, men and women need unconditional she needs unconditional love. He needs the unconditional respect. But let me let me qualify what unconditional respect really means. Unconditional respect does not mean, wise, that you respect sinful behavior. Amen. No. If a man is doing wrong in any kind of way, that don't mean that you respect that. Amen. But it does mean that you handle it respectfully. Yes. Yes. And it does mean that you confront it. In a respectful way. Amen. You don't accept the disrespect or the sin, but you do confront it. See, because uh, remember, none of this is necessary for people that are lovable and wonderful and great. You just automatically respond loving to a woman that is respectful. But he's telling you to love her even when she's not acting lovable. And and, and, and and it would be automatically easy for a woman to respect a man that deserves respect. You wouldn't even have to tell them that. It would not be right in the Bible because you would automatically, most folks would, if they got good sense, most people would automatically respect him if he's acting loving. The point is, the reason why he's telling you this is because he's saying act this way even when they are not deserving of either one of them. The challenge is to move beyond your natural inclination, but to be spiritual and to obey God's word, even in the face of trials and tribulations and even in the face when that other person ain't acting right. So don't tell me you love me when I respect you completely. 
because